Uh, good morning, everybody. Chris Dover here, founder and head trader at pollinatetrain.com. Please do like and subscribe this video, uh, subscribe to the video here uh, on YouTube. And I will continue to be pumping these out in a little bit more timely manner, which I've been doing all week. Uh, we have a Black Friday, Cyber Monday deal coming out later, either today or tomorrow uh, with the new Swing B strategy. We've got discounts to the trading lab. Uh, we got bundles for annual subscribers. Check all that out, pollinatetrain.com. I'll definitely be sharing that out on Twitter. You can follow me at Chris D. Macro on Twitter. <sighs> Morning coffee in. Let's go. All right. So yesterday, the markets just kind of fell apart. This is a daily chart, NASDAQ. As you can see, we have a big, big move yesterday. We got all the way up to 16, uh, 767.50 uh, and closed about, I guess that would be 400 points lower, uh, a high of 16.767, a low of 16.364. So my math says that that's about 400 points lower on NASDAQ. Uh, that's quite a move. That is quite the move. And why that's interesting is because we were at all time highs when that happened. Let's you know take this down to a to a lower time frame, and we can see that this was it started the day off, opened the market, took off to all time highs, and then just sold off the rest of the day. Now this week is a holiday week in the United States, and for that means for any participants in this uh, the NASDAQ index or any other markets trading in the U S it's a holiday for you, whether you like it or not. Uh, and volume typically on a holiday week is pretty light. Um, it was pretty, it was actually kind of large yesterday. That was, that was really of note. Let me add, um, volume here. My apologies. I don't have a separate keyboard. It's, uh, you know, a holiday week. So we do tend to, travel. So as you can see, yesterday's volume was actually pretty big. And you'd expect that all time high, uh, a reversal at all time highs, uh, you would expect some big volume because people got caught off guard here, right? Um, I'm going to go ahead and mute that. It, well, one thing to note, volume is not a is not a major indicator. It's a supporting indicator, for the most part. Uh, you want to find spikes in volume at major changes. Now, we, you know, we're not talking like the big, you know, this would be the COVID volume. You can barely see that. Uh, but you see how there's big volume at the bottom here, uh, bigger, you know, some volume at, at tops and bottoms. So, uh, you know, it started to get big volume on these down days. This is like the first uh, up volume reversal since the last one over here, where you see it here. Now, Reason I have these lines drawn up there is <clears throat> they're magic lines, right? Uh, they're they're magic arbitrary lines that don't really do anything other than they give you a perspective that that generally they've been respected. <clears throat> the thing about diagonal lines is they are uh, they're very subjective to the author of the lines. You know, whoever creates the line is the uh, is the author of it, the designer of it, and they don't have, uh, it, it's too subjective, right? You're just connecting a point, a bunch of points. Now, are you connected to the bodies? Are you connecting the wicks? Uh, do they line up perfectly? That's not what it's about. That's not what I'm about here. Uh, it just seems that every time we get up to the top of that line, we get some weakness. And we had it recently, a couple weeks ago, uh, where at the beginning of November, we took a little bit dip and then we're right back up again. It looks like we're getting about the same sort of thing. That can make sense because, look, yesterday, th let's just think about market participants. If you're buying the NASDAQ at all-time highs, or if you're long up here, going into a long weekend, going into um, the holidays, where you know there's not going to be very much access to correct yourself or uh, hedge yourself in regular markets because you know on Wednesday, markets stop trading. I think Friday morning they trade a little bit, but that's it again until Monday. Uh, and then Monday, we it's, it's I think, uh, 29, 30. So we've got two days left when we come back from the holiday for the month. 
So a lot of people are probably saying, you know what, let's just, let's just book some gains. Let's get out for the week. You know, like me, we're going to be on the road today, half the day driving uh, to see, uh, to, to, we got a nice little uh, villa uh, for the week in wine country. So we're going to, we're going to be on the road. And I don't think that's too different than a lot of market participants. The thing is, for, you know, I was talking to a fellow uh, trader, he's been in the game for 40 years and, you know, he had a, he had a note that he mentioned to me, he says, you know, the 40 years I've been trading, I can't remember a year that I've made money during Thanksgiving week and New Year's. So uh, that's, you know, that's that. And if you're a prop trader at, uh, if you're a top step prop trader, we're not able to trade during this week. So it's, Already, you have a lot of prop firms that just take this week off. They don't allow their traders to to do it. And that's you know they're a, they're a former uh, Chicago floor traders. So you know the vast majority of, of people, the prop firms in Chicago are probably playing the same game. So a lot of the prop traders that normally provide liquidity for these markets are on the sidelines this week. And that's a that's a fairly large contingency of capital. You're not talking about Robinhood traders that are coming in doing this. We're talking about people who have, uh, you know, multi-million dollar trading accounts, and you know, there's a large contingency of them. There's a fleet of them. So, you know, I mean, that, that's not a huge amount when we're talking about the Nasdaq, but it does when it's gone, it's going to be noticeable. So, but let, let's get to it. Okay, as you know, I love the SQN uh, to help me understand where we are in the uh in the market regimes uh we flashed we flashed uh, into bull volatile meaning you know that's where major market tops appear uh we peaked and we we rejected it so then we want to look and see okay are we still in bull volatile is that just playing catch up well one way we can do it is look at the daily percent changes and the daily percent changes are really you know they were they were big over here and they were consistent on this run up there was only a couple before we got some pullback. So I would say that we're, we're a little bit more declining than we are uh, peaking here. Seasonally, we're in the most bullish time of this season of the year uh, into the last part of it. And, and so, you know, right away, it's just generally uh, a bullish time. So we get a dip, likely you're gonna get some of the pullback. Now, one thing I wanna look at is Let's take a look at the largest holdings here of the NASDAQ. We got Apple, we got Microsoft, we got Amazon, Facebook, Alphabet, Tesla, NVIDIA, Alphabet again, <laughs> PayPal, and Adobe. Okay, so they're going to be, and, and the percentage of holding, 10% is Apple, 9% is Microsoft. So when you saw, or when we saw yesterday, the pullback in Apple, which I am still long, when this, when this started going, that's going to affect everything in the market, right? Microsoft, same thing. When they started pulling back, I mean, that, that really says it. And you can see we are in bull volatile in, in, the, in Microsoft. Apple is still in bull quiet, which is one reason why I'm still long it. Uh, and then we can take a look at the XLK, which is the technology for the same sort of thing. You can see. The top holdings in the XLK are very almost the same as the NASDAQ 100. The XLK is the S&P 500 technology sector. So we're all right in that general area. Now, what I want to get back to, the, the big important point here is when the best looking cell setups in the world, which we actually have right now, the best looking cell setup in the world, that's the action. I've been talking about the reaction to the action. So this is our action. We got above that little trend line, which looks like it can, you know, wherever we want to draw it, um, we got above it. It definitely was above it uh, and failed in reverse. Okay, so you're going to have people saying, okay, that is the definition of a top sell uh, pattern. And it, it certainly was. And that was the action. So we get over, went above it and it couldn't hold it and immediately start selling off on the first open. I mean, think about this. Let's say you've been long for a month or two or whatever, and you're getting ready. You know, it's, it's Thanksgiving week. Let's say you've been in the market long enough to know that Thanksgiving is a pretty low volume, not interesting, can't do anything anyway, sort of week. Um, 
and you wake up to this nice little gap up. You sell and then you just get on the road, get in your plane, you know, go board your flight, whatever it is, uh, and, and you're gone and you don't have to think about anything. I mean, even if you're, you know, let's say you got in at 15.5, you know, you, you're up a thousand, a thousand points on that. So um, at that point in time, you're like, whatever, I'll, I'll deal with it when I get back next week. And if you're, you know, if you're a good enough trader, it doesn't matter. You can, you know, you could pull me out, you know, exit me right here and then bring me back in and say, okay, uh, now you can, now you can start trading again. You, you know, you're, you're out of here for the month of October, you're taking month of October and the month of November off. You're not allowed to trade it. And then you come back in and you're trading at 16, six or whatever it is. Okay, cool. Um, if that's the case, uh, a good trader will just be able to figure it out. Right. Uh, scared traders, which are, you know, a lot of people that that really get scared and nervous at tops like this, they're always scared that they're buying. Like if you bought this breakout right here and this happens, uh, you're really worried about things, right? So first of all, let's just take a look at what we got to see here, okay? The actual, now this is a little bit better, this horizontal lines, horizontal lines are a little bit better than diagonal lines because they're not subjective. This is an actual line of actual price and an actual area where the bro the breakout actually happened and this is the breakout candle right new all-time highs so we sell off we come back down and we test it now the reaction to this action is what i'm most interested in and since it's a, a dead week honestly it doesn't matter all that much unless we get some really big major selling uh on major volume and, and just like you know, pull up what every bear thinks is about to happen is a major sell off like that. I don't really see it, but my job is not to predict the future. My job is to react to the action and let it play out. So best looking sell setup in the world. Let's see how it happens so far. And, and, you know, we're, we're about a half hour before market open, uh, on Tuesday, uh, so far it's being bought up a little bit. Now, again, you know, prop trading, we're not trading at all this week. Uh, in, the, in the trading lab, I have some positions on, my swing positions on, uh, but they're, they're time-based exits, so there's nothing to do there. Uh, I'm going to get on the road and, and uh, go to it. Um, not really, you know, I, I have alerts that'll let me know if it is getting dramatic, but otherwise we're, you know, everything's good. Everything's in place. Um, so the only thing I let, let's take a look at what we got going on pre-market pre-market apples being bought. Now, remember we're in bull quiet, uh, the bull quiet market. So Apple reacted to the earnings news and it eventually got bought up and then, you know, it, it comes in and does its thing, you know, and, and then we have a big update yesterday, really big update that gets totally demolished. So now what do we want to see? Best looking sell setup in the world right there which means everybody's piled in short on this. Uh, and if that fails, then they're all gonna have to cover, which is gonna create a, a, a more extensive, extensive uh, reversal. Let's have a look at what Microsoft's doing pre-market. Uh, a little less bullish, but again, it's pre-market and that's you know, not a lot going on. Amazon, a little bullish, not much. Uh, Facebook had already been in a bit of a bearish environment. We're in a neutral market regime, so I don't expect anything worthwhile to come from looking at that one. Google, all-time highs. Uh, one thing I, you know, I had a conversation with a fellow trader yesterday, and, and he's like, it's looking really heavy up here. Uh, you know, he's right. It's, it's not looking extremely bullish. But what, what did it do? It broke out to new all-time highs. And it's just hanging out at all-time highs. So eventually it has to do something. But, you know, how do you, how do you do something and, and you get everybody all bared up and then you can rip their face off. That's one way to do it. Um, you know, this, this Tesla hasn't, even though Elon sold $10 billion right here and the world freaked out, we're back to the day he sold. We're back to that level. So maybe it was just his volume was the seller there. Anyway, it's all looking very, uh, very good. One little trick we use in the trading lab, if you're, if you are day trading, I like to throw up a, an hourly chart of the NDX. So the, the NASDAQ 100, uh, we don't need that. We 
So one simple trick I like to use is if you're ever below, so the, this is our Bollinger Band, but the middle line of a Bollinger Band is the 20 simple moving average. So if the hourly NDX is ever below there, there's no trading. It's just, that's, it's just wacky trading. So I'm looking and, you know, I'm, occasionally I'll look to take the bounces off that if it does happen. Uh, you know, like you can see over here, it happens, happens. Uh, but typically when we're below that, I don't want to be messing with it. There's just no trading on the day trading side. And that's usually when, you know, some wackiness happens. As you can see that happened over here after the Fed announcement, some wackiness, you know, it just stayed away. Every time it got bought, it got sold. Every time it bought, it got sold. So you just, it's a quick lever to say, okay, you look for shorts, uh, or as I do, I just, I just don't trade. I take the take that time off. I'll pay attention. I'll set an alert. Let me know when we're back above it and I'll, you know, come back to it. But for the most part, I don't even mess with it. And that's what we are right here. Uh, Thanksgiving week, we're below the 20. You got the, you know, you got the day off. Uh, you know, we're all, we already have the day off because, you know, our, our prop, uh, our prop trading rules don't allow us or you know, the company doesn't allow us to trade there. But, um, but if you're, if you're trading for your own account, just don't do it. Just don't do it. Take the day off, go enjoy the holiday week with your family, and then wait till we get back above the 20 simple moving average, and then you can start trading again. Now, that's a trick we use in the trading lab. That's a trick I've used over, uh, you know, I've developed over the years. And, you know, when you're in bull quiet, it's long only. So all you're looking is just finding opportunities to where you're buying, uh, you're buying dips or you're buying breakouts. And then when it gets up to the top of the Bollinger Band on the hourly, you know, you, you start saying, okay, uh, I'm going to be a little more tactical here. I'm going to buy dips and sell up into the Bollinger Band. Look at, you're looking at taking exits. Occasionally you get some spikes where it pushes it, but for the most part, it's really, uh, it's kind of the top of a move. So it's going to, it's, it's going to go up, maybe do it. And then it's going to consolidate a little bit. Sometimes you can get a little bit out of it, but for the most part, the, the meat of a move is going to be happening from the midline to the top where it's high probability, low risk. You can print money. That's, you know, that's easy money to make every day. Now, uh, again, we're, we're about a half hour before market starts. I'll be uh, sharing this out uh, as soon as I get it done. Uh, this is the pre-market on Apple. A little bit of buying going on. Uh, nothing too fancy. Nothing to... Nothing to think about here. Let's take a look at NASDAQ, what it's doing. It's bottomed in the, uh, you know, from all that. So there was been, there's some lower wicks. So they're buying here. But again, this is pre-market. So nothing too fancy. That's all I got today. Uh, we'll see how the, I may have something a little bit later today, but most likely tomorrow I'll be back. Uh, and we'll just keep going. Again, pollinatrading.com. Go subscribe to the newsletter. It's free. I'm cranking out the analysis uh, regularly there. Uh, we do have discounts going on starting this week, the Black Friday discount, Cyber Monday, for the Trading Lab, the new Swing Beast trading strategy, which is, uh, has been killing it. We, you know, we murdered that Apple trade. Uh, and I'll be releasing that one to everybody uh, who signs up for it. Uh, starting this week. So you'll be starting the very bullish time of the year being the October through May timeframe where typically we have the strongest bull market uh, over the, the course of history. Those, those times have been the strongest. So having a nice swing trading strategy to deal with that in a nice rotational method, we'll be rotating through all the different stocks in the S&P 500. So Get over there, get subscribed. You'll get, uh, if you get subscribed to the newsletter, you'll get the announcements of the discounts before everybody else. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at Chris D. Macro. Sometimes I'm smart and funny and witty. Sometimes I'm, I don't know, boring, but <laughs> I think I'm worth a follow. All right, everybody. Have a wonderful, well, I guess, holiday week. Bye. <laughs>